Um, sorry about that. Um, yeah, that was, um, I appreciate you holding on. And I know we have a small, a short agenda. So that was probably particularly painful. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We're going to, we're going to get through it. And uh, <laughs> so can uh, you I, just I recap say... who did the minutes so I can, did anybody take notes about that? Uh, like who made the motion? I, I okay the minutes. All right. Okay. And Dennis and, uh, seconded. seconded. Okay. And Correct. they we did one vote to unanimously approve both sets of minutes. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, it was a very efficient meeting running. <laughs> if I do say so myself. Great. Um, okay. Um, so we just have, you know, discussion really um the first item i don't know if you had a chance to look at the plans but and i know some of you were on the board i can't remember was everybody on the board to, for the um jackson street project that's on the agenda okay not chris okay it's fine you can still vote on this but i just want to bring everybody up to speed so um the applicant i i can't remember what i said to every anybody <laughs> about this but so this project was for two duplexes plus a one unit above a garage on Jackson Street. And it was approved early on in the um, shutdown. Um, and um, the since everybody knows, I think at, by, at this point, the cost of construction as particular lumber has gone through the roof, which has caused the um, this particular applicant to sort of figure out how to potentially phase this project. And also in the intervening months, you, the zoning was changed to um, encourage smaller units. So um, this applicant wants to start on a phased approach of um, just building the garage with the apartment unit above, but instead of doing a single apartment unit, doing two eight, um, like 400 square foot units. It was gonna be in a thousand square foot apartment unit above the garage. And it's the same footprint, same location. She just wants to do two units instead and take advantage of that new zoning that was adopted. So far, the other two buildings with the duplexes remain the same, but she's also considering um, potentially coming back to modify those to make them smaller, but I don't, that's just sort of really cursory initial conversation. So I don't know that that would ever go anywhere, but I just wanted to let you know that that phase will be a different phase. And if there are changes to any of the other phases of this construction, she will come back. Um, so as part of that phasing, she also wants to phase in the, um, the site improvements and we've discussed ways to provide a financial um, guarantee that the other elements will get completed if she doesn't do them, you know, in phase one. So we're not quite there yet because she the she wouldn't need to start closing out building permits till you know probably another year from now after that first phase of the garage and the two small units are. Um, completed so I really just wanted to bring you up to speed. Um, on the concept that she now wants to phase the project because the construction costs have gone through the roof and she can't quite, she doesn't think it makes sense to build all of it now when the prices are at their peak. Um, but she does want to move ahead with this piece of it and then take advantage of the um, half scale unit allowance in the zoning. And so how, since you- How long does she have to act on it, on the approved plans? So she has, well, three years, except there's three plus because the governor's um, emergency order actually extended the window. But now that as of next week, that's the emergency state of emergency is is disappearing. So the clock starts again. Um, so she probably has three and a half years. But it, the, under the zoning ordinance, it's the amount of time to substantially start a project. It's not to complete it. So if she does this first phase, that could be considered substantial start. So it sort of um, gives her a much um, longer timeline to complete the entire project. 
Does it ever expire when it has to be complete, substantially complete by? No. And so that's the conversation that I had with her initially about putting um, either an escrow or some kind of performance guarantee when she wants to close out the just the first phase that um, there would be some um, guarantee that the site work that's required of the project be completed at some point so that it's not just lingering sort of as an unfinished site for years and years. Um, but that's the piece that I'll bring back to the planning board um, at the point at which she's asking for a certificate of occupancy for that first phase. So then um, typically what we would do is we'd ask for how much money it's gonna cost to finish the item she's not doing yet and then have the letter of credit or whatever the performance guarantee is um, reviewed um, by DPW internally just to sort of um, say, yes, these numbers make sense. And then ultimately I would bring that number to you as the planning board to say, do you accept this figure um, as a performance guarantee? And then, you know, we would be essentially it's agreement, a tri-party agreement between the bank, the city and the applicant. So can she build the garage, the two units, and only partially do like the entrance and the walkway and stuff? Or how, how does yeah, that Yeah, that's work? what she, yeah. So she actually wants to not, not finish the driveway access because she's going to need construction vehicles right, later to go back and she doesn't want to tear up the driveway, right. but she's not required to do. And also, if you remember on the plans, it shows pervious pavement in that mm -hmm. first section. Yeah. She doesn't want to spend money on pervious pavement until at the very end of the project when everything else is built. So that's the part she wants to leave unfinished. Basically, it will be just a gravel driveway until she starts building the other pieces. Um, so is there, I, a, is there a diagram or something that shows this phasing? Um, she did not show a phasing plan. She just submitted the um, plans, which I emailed to you all, which I can pull up and then I can but show That's the you. full thing, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So some portion of what she sent us would be built. Right. Just the, the piece behind the existing house, which is the garage and the apartments above it would be the only thing that would be built. Right, but it seems, I mean, is the essence of this is that normally you get, like when you do your, when you close out your building permit, there's somewhere that says like, this conforms to the zoning as it was applied for when you got your building permit, right? So right. we're basically asking for, so she's trying to do, like if she just built, I guess like, don't we need something like, say like the whole planning board, we all get, you know, we all go to jail for uh, corruption and then we have a new planning board who doesn't remember <laughs> this uh who uh like how are they to know like this was it like don't we need some kind of documentation that this is what's agreed upon that she can get a cfo for like how can you do this without a diagram well because at this point she could just build part of it and call it a day you she could get a cfo she could well she could get a if she did all the site work so there are two ways she could get a certificate of occupancy. She could either decide I'm scaling back the project and I'm only going to do the smaller piece. And then she'd come back to the planning board and say, I've changed my project. I want an amendment. Right. And that's the right. point at which you would say, oh, OK, so you don't have to do all the swales over here and this stormwater thing over there because you're so below the threshold of even needing that stuff. Don't worry about it. Right, that's a different project, presumably. Right, right, yeah. But so the trade off, so then the reason why you don't need to see a phasing plan now necessarily is because she's going to get under construction. And who knows, by the time she's halfway through this, maybe the cost of the other stuff has gone down and she'll proceed on that. But when she's looking for a certificate of occupancy, that's when I'm going to bring it back to you and say, okay, here's what she wants. Then she will identify, here's what I built. Here's what's the left to build, and here's how much it's going to cost, and yeah. here's how I'm on the hook financially to do that. So, so isn't she putting your, isn't she putting herself at a huge amount of risk of us saying no? You haven't done enough site work. Like I don't understand. 
Well, she is, except we've also talked about the fact that this small project in and of itself would only trigger a minor site plan approval because it's for a detached unit and it's even less than 2000 square feet of construction. It's just right at the threshold of site plan review. So all the other stuff that would have been required of her would have would disappear. Um, so it's, by, that is she it, plan these. it's not by right. No, the two units are not by right. No, because it's in a detached structure. So it's always when you're adding a unit that's not attached, that's what triggers site plan because it's it's a separate building on the property. I'm surprised she's going forward with a garage and two small units, which are going to not produce much income when she could go with the duplex. I mean, if you're going to pay all that money, it's going to cost to do a garage, cost foundation, counts. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. I'm just yeah. surprised that she's not going forward with the thing that she could make money back at versus wasn't her son gonna live in one of them wasn't that That's part yeah. of the plan you're right maybe yeah. maybe she's building it because he's gonna live in one of them or something yeah. yeah i mean it's irrelevant i'm just talking out loud because we can because there's nobody here basically <laughs> mr uh, hanzo's so ipad is here sorry john i wasn't <laughs> saying you're nobody you're you're a somebody trust me um so i'm just really it's here to say do you feel like this is a minor enough amendment to allow her to go from one 1,000 square foot unit to two 450 square foot units under the um, half scale um, provision? Um, does, does that change parking space requirements? Mm -mm. Doesn't change because for 1,000 square feet, right. you need two parking spaces and for 500 square feet, you need one each. So it's the same. Okay. So is the question like if we don't, if we did feel like it needed more that we would need to schedule it for a, a hearing or if we don't, we can approve it tonight or if we don't, we don't need to do anything farther. Right. If you say, yes, this is well within the, we're approving this as an administrative change. So there's sort of three levels. One is staff could approve it and say, this is an administrative change. And we do that for small things. Um, uh, on site plans pretty regularly, then there's a threshold of, well, this, this should be posted on an agenda for the planning board to say, yeah, this is pretty minor and it fits right in with, you know, our goals of encouraging smaller units and it's not expanding any building footprint or changing parking or anything that might trigger a full site plan amendment, which, which requires public hearing and a new application. And so, I am suggesting and recommending that it falls into that middle category where it's planning board, it's on a posted agenda, but it's not, um, it's still considered an administrative change to the plans. Okay, so which we would not have to vote on as long as we agree. You need to vote on it, but it doesn't mean that it's a, a, an official um, amendment. You're voting, you're agreeing that you think it doesn't need a full amendment. Okay. If she was going the other way, say she had come for the four bay garage with two apartments above it. And then she was saying, I want to add two two story duplex buildings behind this as an administrative amendment. No way, right? No. We would have to have a hearing. Right. I understand like she's doing less than she originally applied for. I just have a real problem with like, there's a, there's a that we're signing off on the idea of giving a CEO that presumably like, she could run out of money and nothing ever will happen. And like, this is the final state. And just the idea that that like, we're basically approving like a project that has a half, there's a halfway point and a full point. And we're saying the halfway point is fine without even really seeing what that looks like. I don't like it. You're not saying what the halfway point looks like now. I'm giving you the heads up that she's right. probably gonna come back after she's done with the garage to say, hey, I'm just, I decided I'm phasing this. And okay. would you we're only voting on I'm going we're only from voting 1, on thousand square feet to two oh. five hundred square feet. That's it. The rest That's it. is kind of yeah. background information. I see. I see. Oh, you see? That part. <laughs> I misunderstood and now I understand. And you'll and so at that point where she's ready to do that, then she'll say, Hey, by the way here's what I'm going to do to guarantee that I get the rest of the work done because I'm going to phase it in this manner. 
Right. She might she might come into a windfall of insulation and be able to do the entire. <laughs> right. Or a vintage Wilco poster. <laughs> I, got, I got mine right up here. Oh my God, we clearly have a type on this board. <laughs> um, so so I think oh, yeah. um, do, okay. do I hear a motion to um, somebody is crawling into your uh, into the dunes of your beach behind you? It's a very interesting look. Heroin. <laughs> um, my shoulders. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was interesting. Um, so I think what I'm asking for is, do I hear a motion to uh, approve the new uh, floor plan as an administrative change? Is that correct? So moved. Whatever second, version of that. Second. Yeah, second that. Okay, okay so who All did right. that, Krista? Or Jana? Oh, Jana. Jana. And then D and David second. Okay. Um, so, uh, so on the motion to um, uh, approve this as an administrative uh, change, uh, Melissa. Yes. Chris. Spirit of Allen. Yes. Uh, Sam. Yes. Krista. Yes. Jana. Yes. David. Yes. And I also vote Aye. yes. Um, uh, okay, so, oh, we did have an a and in there. I totally forgot about that. Okay, so you guys want to talk about housing choice? <laughs> um, David, you had, had asked a couple of um, weeks ago about sort of updating or talking about the housing choice bill that was discussed at Pioneer Valley um, Planning Commission meeting. So I put together a little table. I don't know if I sent it to you or not. I don't think I did, but I'm going to screen share it just to go over it. Um, if I can find it, here we go. Okay, can you all see this? I'm going to, uh, this table? Yep. Okay. So the housing choice bill uh, has was a, is a piece of legislation that um, was recently, was, discussed and um, debated for a long time at the state uh, legislature and was adopted, gosh, I guess it already goes back to January now, January, February. Um, but what it did was to, and the idea is, the idea behind it was to make it easier to um, allow housing development to get approved in communities around the Commonwealth. And so um, there were standards of reducing the vote requirements for both zone, on the zoning um, ordinance side, as well as the permitting side. And again, all of that to sort of complement um, efforts by communities to uh, um, get new housing built um, because we're in such, um, a crisis across the state. So I put together this table about what all the language really means um, for you as a board. And in some cases, you know, we've been able to develop, um, I just sort of taking a step back, we've been able to work with um, elected officials, city councilors to um, discuss zoning amendments that allow higher densities or different densities or new types of housing units. We went through this whole process this year with several zoning changes that would result or could result in encouraging new housing in Northampton where we want it. And, and they've all been adopted unanimously by council. So that's not always the case in Northampton and it's not always the case in the Commonwealth, there's there are many contentious battles across the Commonwealth. Um, but so um, to to look at planning board voting requirements, um, those were changed too. So now you know that for and and this has also came up in our discussion. I think last week about trying to educate the members of the public who come in for public hearings about permits to try to um, make sure people understood the jurisdiction of the planning board. 
what was the vote count required? Is it a special permit or site plan and what the differences are in those kinds of permits? Well, one of the differences up until this year um, between special permit and site plan was the vote count. And for special permits, um, it was a higher threshold and it, and it still is a higher threshold for most special permits. Um, and meaning you need a super majority of the members. You need five of seven board members to approve special permits. And we've talked about that a lot. But this housing choice bill said there are some circumstances if a project needs a special permit that you actually just need the same threshold as for site plan. So you just need a simple majority, which for the planning board is four members of seven need to vote to approve special permits that result in um, additional housing units in very specific um, circumstances. So on the left-hand side, I've identified the special permit project types that, um, you know, taking the language from the stat from the adopted um, statute and um, applying it to Northampton and our regulations and how it fits into our existing zoning. So multifamily housing within a half mile, this is what it says, a train station or bus station pulse point when 10% of the units meet the definition of affordable then you only need simple majority. So what that means is really in Northampton, it means our special permits that are triggered for new housing is um, at seven or more units. And you've seen a few projects over the last couple of years that triggered special permit because it was seven or more units. William Street is an example, 30 William Street. I'm sorry, that was site plan. That was just under the threshold. Um, so before that, I guess I would say Pomeroy Terrace on the corner of Pomeroy and um, Bridge Street. Um, but because it's so specific to, um, and so we when we have special permits for more than seven units, um, that's in the URC district and URB district. However, um, it's narrowed down to being within a half mile of either Union Station or we're call, interpreting it to be the bus station pulse point, which is the at the Academy of Music at this point. So really the point at which you need simple majority are just projects of seven or more units in the URC or URB district that are also within um, a half mile of a, the Academy of Music or Union Station. And when 10% of the units are going to be affordable. Um, the other instances in which this is um, would be applicable in Northampton is our mixed uses in business zones when 10% of the uses uh, units are affordable, um, or if the board is being is asked to reduce parking requirements for a project, and that reduction in parking would result in more housing um, being able to be built. That would be a circumstance in which the planning board will, we only need four members of seven. And then every other special permit that doesn't fit that criteria still continues to require the five of seven. Um, and um, so that's on the voting side. There were no changes to the site plan or subdivision approval through this um, housing choice legislation. In terms of city council, about, yeah. I'm, so, I'm sorry, and, and maybe this is not relevant to this, but what if we have someone who uh, takes advantage of this and then decides when the project's done that they don't want to do, uh, they don't want to do affordable housing? Um, well, two things. One is uh, it depends on how the permit, you know, if the affordable units are required because of some other aspect in the project. And then we'd also look at the vote. Like if it was a close vote, I mean, if it's a unanimous vote, it doesn't do anything, right? Because the vote would be the yeah. same either way. So we would have to look, we probably, I mean, if that ever happened, then we'd probably go back to the vote and say, okay, you have to go back to the planning board. And, and also it might require going back to the planning board depending on the, on the nature of the application, you know, if there were certain um, um, other aspects 
of waivers or something else that were granted because of affordable housing um, component, and then the affordable housing was no longer going to be as part of that project, then that by itself would trigger an amendment. So it's kind of, it depends. Okay. Any other questions? This is not so much specific to this, but it just triggered the question for me. Can you remind us, given that we, I think when we're full have nine members, seven full and two associate, how would that work if, you know, eight people were here or all nine people were here if we had, I don't think we currently have nine members, but if we did, how do these mm -hmm. numbers translate? Is it just that the associate members votes drop out? Yes, that's okay. right. Okay, so on to the city council voting requirements. There are a lot of other categories that um, fall into just requiring a simple majority of city council to adopt zoning ordinance amendments. Um, right now, all zoning ordinances um, require a super majority, or before this, I'm sorry, before this was adopted, super majority, meaning six of nine councilors for city of Northampton were required voting on ordinance amendments and sometimes you know we on the staff level count every vote <laughs> and and sometimes it's very close that we might not get six um, other times it's not so close and like i said earlier this year we were getting unanimous votes of council and we try to bring everyone along and address issues so that we don't get into this um concern that an amendment might not pass. Um, so multifamily zone, a zoning ordinance that would allow multifamily to be by right or, or by special permit drops to um, simple majority. Mixed use by right or by special permit drops to simple majority. Open space cluster um, zoning ordinance amendments that instead of special permit are by right, um, just a simple majority. Attached or detached accessory dwellings detached accessory dwellings by special permit, reduction in parking requirements by special permit for mixed use or multifamily housing production, the creation of a smart growth overlay or starter home district. Starter home district is a, a new catchy term at the, from DHCD about a different kind of housing development that they're trying to create incentives um, for which they're trying to create incentives. And then changes in dimensional standards that actually result in increasing the number of allowed residential units, uh, creation of a transfer of development rights. If um, there's no decrease in density, um, and then those all require simple majority. Everything else remains the same for zoning amendments. They just re they require super majority, which is six of nine councilors. Any questions on that? Um, I've posted this on our webpage, so in case anybody ever wants um, the information or forgets it, it's, it's there. Um, when permits come in front of you, I'll remind you of the vote um, that's necessary um, if it falls into, you know, one of these categories. So that's basically it on that one. Cool, cool. Thanks for that explanation. Yep. Uh, I bet those debates at the State House were riveting. Yes. Um, so, okay. So, um, all right. So, I think so. We have one ANR. Yeah. Uh, and I, and that one is just the Pine Grove permit, app, uh, the layout that you approved at the last meeting. Um, where the flag lot was flip flopped to the other side, you had already in, had you had already voted to endorse the original cluster plus um, two additional lots, and and because then you approved the amendment that that changed the lot lines, they actually technically then on the heels of that filed the survey um, for the approval not required based on the decision that you already granted for the lot layout. So the, the ANR is merely just the administrative function of creating the legal lot boundaries based on the your planning board special permit amendment. Okay. 
Does anybody need to see that or have their memory refreshed? No. What'd you say, Sam? <laughs> move, move approval. Move to approve the NR, which we can't do anything about. <laughs> I'd, like to, I'd like to see the plan before I. Okay. Vote to endorse it, you know, yep. just as a formality. Give me two secs here. Thought I had it up on my screen and then it disappeared. I think when I was in the CBA. Okay. Um, okay, here we go. When are they going to open up a Puerto Rican restaurant in this town? All right. Sam, are yeah. you looking to invest? Are you? Uh... No, I just want to eat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's the the revised lot one, revised flag lot. Those had those were swapped sides, and then lot two got much bigger um, to accommodate the cell tower, and then lot three and four then were shrunk. So that's what the ANR is. Uh, is this different from what we saw the other, a few weeks ago? This is no. the same as what we saw. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's just yep. the ANR part of it. Right. Okay. Okay. So I heard Sam move for approval, but I don't know if I got a second. I second. All right. Can we go back to the gallery? Uh, so on the motion to approve the ANR, uh, Sam. Yes. Jana. Yes. David. Yes. Chris. Yes. Melissa. Yes. Krista. Yes. And I also vote yes. Great. And since we already approved the minutes, I think I think that's everything. I mean, not for nothing, you know. We, we could go to the brewery now. <laughs> uh, but first, so George, that's where George is, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, do I hear a motion to? Well, I guess when anybody else have any last business or anything they they want. Okay, so I do I hear a motion? I move to end the meeting. Um, I like the way Sam. No fancy adjournment. <laughs> I move I, to end it. <laughs> Do I have a second to end it? Second. All right. Uh, Sam. Uh, yes. Jana. Yes. Chris. Yes. David. Yes. Melissa. Yes. Krista. Yes. And I also agree that we should end it. <laughs>